Welcome back. I'm Tedward, and today, thanks to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts, we're driving this beautiful 1970 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. The Ghia, the Italian designed bodywork of this beautiful little car, envelops a Volkswagen Type 1 Beetle floor pan. So it's a rear engine. I think this one's a 1600cc, and it's got a little four speed manual. It's a happy little car. And at one point this was the fastest Volkswagen. This was the second car they made after the Beetle. And they were all hand built at the Carmen factory. So this is a really cool little sports cabriolet. This is one of those weird cars that my dad or anyone of my dad's generation seems to always point out on the road. So let me show you around a little bit. So you've got these beautiful big fenders. We have great chrome hubcaps covering our little wheels. 15 inch wheels to be exact with 165 millimeter wide rubber front and rear. Let's take a look inside and then under the hood. We do have room for rear passengers if we flip that back seat up, but back here, just like an old Volkswagen or a 356, you can pop the rear like so. And this reveals our engine. Isn't that cool? Shouldn't be too, too difficult to work on, but it's fun when it's running. You can watch this distributor spin. That's clear, very cool stuff. And then around front, if we want to open the front, first we come through here, pop open this glove box, and then this lever pushes forward and reveals our trunk. Our frunk, I should say. On springs, it jumps up pretty darn quickly. We've got a spare tire, some of my snacks, and a license plate that we'll put on in a moment. In order to get to that fuel filler, you'll need to come around here. There is this little guy right here, pull, and there she is, regular gas, 91 Ron. Remember, Ron is a different measuring system than what you use in the US, so you could probably get away with 87 in that because 98 Ron is our premium. But it is incredibly hot out here. I've just done a very long photo shoot, and this convertible top is not the easiest thing in the world to operate by yourself. So I'm a bit tired. I would like to get out and drive this thing with you guys and show you how enjoyable it is. It's not quick, but boy, does it have character. To start the carbon gear, we've got pretty standard ignition here on the column. We've got floor pedals down here, nice and tight together like that. And we have our four speed manual transmission. Reverse is down over and back. So the rest, very normal, no dog leg pattern here. Get it started up. This does jump to life really quick. Fuel pump going. Very happy. We've got a cassette deck with Neil Diamond's greatest hits. All right, that's what we like to see. That's kind of fun. And that mirror just came off, just came off. Uh, on the owner's drive over. So a little bit of a bummer, but not to worry. We've got our handbrake here, works really nicely. And then into first, and away we go. Nice big steering wheel. What do we have for a horn? <laughs> Cute, love it. No tachometer, but you just drive it by feel. It's happy, it's not a high revving engine or anything by that means. So you just kind of find the torque and ride it out. Those clouds don't look very happy, so I think we're gonna just kind of beeline it home. Maybe not the full drive route with the top down in this thing. <laughs>
This drive line is incredibly easy to adapt to. It drives very smoothly. This is the kind of car that you want to teach someone to drive a stick shift on because it just flows. Everything's natural. You're not adapting to some weird electronic or mechanical dampers and all kinds of emissions nannies. No, this just operates exactly as it's supposed to be, incredibly direct. The only thing that's a little difficult to get used to is the handling, the steering. I mean, the steering is direct and, and light, but it, it, it does operate and drive a bit like a truck. So you've got to kind of settle it into corners and coerce it to where you want to go. It's not necessarily a sporty vehicle. That's where you start to feel like the Volkswagen side of this, where it is certainly not a Porsche. Looking in the mirror at those clouds, I'm really hoping we beat this. I do not want to have to try to speed race the storm with this roof. It is actually quite difficult. Well, it's not difficult, but it is a little cumbersome and awkward. I think I can get it up much faster than I can get it down. No one in Massachusetts knows how to merge, so they just screw you over. I am an elder, Mr. Audi. I was a Volkswagen long before you were a thought in your little A4. There's a little bit of play in the steering that kind of does nothing, but that dead space is okay because it's met with action on either side of it. That's okay. And the throttle is super easy to initiate for a downshift. There you go. The stick is light. It takes like zero effort to move this around. The brakes are positive and functional, always a good thing to have in a classic car, because you don't want to be in a situation where the modern world has great brakes and your silly little vintage car has drums. No, this, this works. And you don't want to feel like you've got Brillo pad on wood. You want to feel like you've actually got some real brakes going on. Driving this almost feels like driving a giant Fiat 500. <laughs> it's like that low revving, just kind of ride the torque and be very patient with your shifts. It's easier transmission than that for sure though, because these were these were the everyman's cars, you know, a Beetle transmission for sure. So you weren't sitting around trying to grind around. They were they were pretty robust, but easy to engage. You know, anyone could drive these. You didn't have to have an outrageous skill set to get around in these. I always love seeing this little Mini Cooper. So I think that's gonna wrap it up on the Carmen Ghia, your dad's favorite coach-built car that was attainable and still is attainable. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks to Bond Group for tossing me the keys to this beautiful Carmen Cabriolet, or Cabriolet, as it says here. And what a blast, what a joy, and what a bucket list car to finally get behind the wheel of. And watch this, we have self-canceling 
indicators, unlike the Dino of about the same year. So that's what happens when the Germans build the car. And if I can find second gear. <laughs> Look at this, self-canceling indicators. That's luxury. I don't think the Dino has that, the last Dino I drove, but that's gonna do it for your dad's favorite coach-built car, the Carmen Ghia, the Cabriolet, the Cabriolet, apparently. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, no matter what you're driving. And I'll see you in the next one. What? Guys, don't drive on the wrong side of the road. Meep, <laughs> meep.